Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I've just realised uh, the great uh, disadvantage of being the last speaker of the day is uh, you're all probably a bit weary. Um, there's probably not much you haven't heard or seen uh, during the course of the day. So I've halved the problem by not showing you any slides or PowerPoint this afternoon uh, whatsoever. Um, I know you've had a fascinating conference and um, uh, the, uh, you're exploring innovations in the way retailers uh, sell and customers buy and the speed with which these things change. And I suppose it's on that subject of change and I'm very grateful for Jeremy saying that places have a future. Um, coming from the kind of design world, that is a bit of a relief. But it's on that subject of change that I would like to start. Um, and maybe just slow us down a tad. Five shifts in thinking of the kind of, over certainly my uh, uh, kind of memory. Collective retailing began in markets and for the last 50 years we've been predicting the death of the traditional market, but then more recently came seasonal markets, German markets, boot fairs, Spanish markets, French markets, borough market. If you were a follower of the next best thing, uh, you'd have put your money on uh, that first wave of catalogue shopping and then tele-shopping. Uh, I sincerely hope you didn't. Retail parks were and maybe still going to be the future forever, but clearly there's issue, issues there. Despite that phenomenal growth that Justin uh, told you, there's some flaws in that format. We can see evidential failures. So like anything, the bad ones won't survive. The monolith shopping centre will kill the town centre was the cry of the early 1970s. Retail regeneration was the echoing call of the 1990s. Online is it, but maybe omni-channel I've heard today is really it. So you may kind of get my drift here that the prediction of, of uh, the future of retail is a highly risky business. And so maybe I shouldn't even try. I have actually tried before. In 1992, at the risk of showing my age, Martin Chase of Donaldson's, uh, then of Donaldson's, and I predicted, uh, prepared a research paper entitled Shopping After the Millennium. We predicted the fall of the niche retailer, growing tax, the north-south divide, environmentally sustainable retailing, fewer players dominate the market, automated scanning, the rise and fall of shared retailing, the inexorable growth of the food store, uh, more international retailers, open street shopping centres, uh, etc. All good stuff, certainly not rocket science. But you know one thing? Not a single mention of the internet or online. And that was only 20 uh, years ago. We concluded on two scenarios. One was the suburban society, the retailing industry leading the way to cheaper quality shopping and the decline of the town centre. And there were other one, intervene and invest, a national planning policy <coughs> with uh, properly resourced town central authorities, created climate confidence for public and private sector investment in town centres. Clever stuff that, um, hedging your bets. Did it both ways, because actually both came to pass for a while. With the 90s showing huge growth in, uh, out of town, until PPG6 kicked in, and then there was the urban renaissance became a thing, which saw, at that time, more investment in town and centres than ever before. So we kind of got it right both ways. Maybe should I, I should have stopped there and not try it uh, anymore. Uh, and maybe those scenarios are exactly, exactly the same ones we face today, but maybe not, because we have moved on. How? Well, you've probably heard it. Um, the one thing that, uh, the thing we didn't mention, because we couldn't mention, because it hadn't been invented yet, is now 13 or 14 percent of retail sales. There's over 25,000 empty shops, 14 percent of the stock. There are falling rents. Many shopping centres really qualify for being put into administration. We've got rising unemployment, low consumer confidence, and to be honest, pretty poor governance. Now we've got um, this situation where we've got polarised views, and I call it Portus versus Wrigley. In the red corner, let's start with Mary Portus of Harvey Nicks uh, and Queen of Shops fame. And I guess that when, he, when many people heard that she could be commissioned by the government to review, to review the future of the town centre, they put their first thought at mine was Channel 4 TV programme. <laughs> Watch this space, that might well happen. It's actually a serious and broad think, uh, thinking piece of work based on the importance that town centres have as a focus for communities, culture, entertainment, and not just shopping where billions, billions of pounds and centuries of time have been invested in the urban fabric and infrastructure. She simply campaigns for a level playing field with 28 recommendations covering operational management teams, town teams, business improvement districts, business rates, 
car parking charges, flexibility in the use classes order, town centre first planning policy, which we've, was endorsed again uh, on Tuesday with the publication of the National um, uh, Planning Policy Framework, central government intervention out of town shopping, compulsory purchase, etc., etc. The results, or the feedback on that from the government, on what they think of that is actually coming out uh, tomorrow. It will be in your newspapers to, uh, tomorrow morning, and I do expect it to be broadly supportive and accepting those broad recommendations. So that's Mary. Over in the blue corner, out comes Phil Ridley of Debenhams, BHS, New Lord, Majestic, Carlucho, Spain, with a bare knuckle fighting response. In a recent speech, he said, the high street is moribund. It's in a death spiral. There's more land out of town. I thought it was just me that did rocky science. Um, I want to see thriving, vibrant town centres. I just don't think that shops are the centre of that. I believe passionately in retail, and I believe passionately in high streets. I just think their marriage is over. Now those somewhat divergent uh, views sound remarkably like my 1992 scenarios. What strikes me about those polarised views is they are based on two influences. One is what you've really heard today, what the future of retail could be, laissez-faire, emphasis on entrepreneurship, innovation, technology, opportunism, the next best thing. And the other is influenced by a slightly more ideological, <coughs> well, what do we want it to be approach, where retailers and consumers are made subject to some form of external context or constraint. Oh my goodness, I can hear you thinking of this late hour of the day. He's going to get philosophical, maybe. But I'd like to do a brief case study, again with no pictures. Uh, this place could be near you. You will have had this conversation over your dinner tables, I can guarantee it. I'm not going philosophical, I'm going to East Finchley High Road. Stay with me for a moment. East Finchley High Road in North London. Community High Street, two supermarkets, 100 or so shops. 300,000 square feet, mainly independents, a couple of pubs, thriving Art Deco cinema, some local caps, a great chippy, a tube station, London's blingest street in Bishop's Avenue at one end and a pretty rough council estate at the other. It works, just. It looks okay, people use it, people like it, despite having to risk life and limb to cross it. Local businesses pay about two million pounds a year in business rates, which the government has just announced will actually go up by an inflation beating 5.6%. So what is the local authority approach to this high street which Phil Wrigley believes is moribund and should be allowed to die? Well, let's help it on its way. Town centre management, no chance. There is no sense of overall customer or consumer community service despite the two million pounds of income. In fact, the only sign of collective organisation or response to the visitor are the guys in the high-vis jackets on three-wheel scooters, you know what's coming, who fly out from a high street to slap a ticket on your windscreen whilst you're fumbling with your mobile phone to pay the minimum parking charge of £1.20 or 30 minutes. That's if you're pre Winston. This is the Ryanair approach to customer service. At its finest. You may not have a choice if you want to fly to Brindisi, but if you're an N2 shopper, the developing chic of Muswell, Muswell Hill beckons, Brent Cross gives you a fix of multiples, and nearby Tesco and all circulars happy for you to park for as long as you like for free. Now we, I believe, need to wake up here. Um, Phil, please listen to Mary. If this high street is dying, it's because of mixed up, for the press here, by the way. Okay, well, I don't mind, I don't mind. I'll just go for it. If, if the high street is dying, it's because of mixed up, lazy, impoverished, cent impoverished central and local government failing in their duty of care. Go on, I said it. And by the way, our town centre first government policy has resulted in five out of every six square feet uh, granted consent in the last eight years being out of town. How many government call-ins have there been? One. This shape of things to come is determined by this, and as much as by retail renovation and new brands. <coughs> we give the Porter's approach a fighting chance. It's not trying to kill off existing out of town retailing, far from it. It's just trying to create that level playing field and where anyway, multi-channel, omni-channel, it will do its own thing regardless. But I will leave you with um, some uh, predictions. Again, you'll have heard most of them uh, today. Department stores, uh, what a great job they are doing, but I think they will look very different in 20 years. They understand the convenience of online, the search for something different, and they will respond. I do believe they will respond even further with Digital interactive displays, theatre, stronger and rapidly changing themes, higher levels of service, Jeremy's already talked about that in terms of peripheral.
for sales, focusing on experience and brand, not just more space and materials. There will be fewer and larger shops. Again, uh, Justin's, I think, already said that. Many will change use. Many to related services and catering, many into not much at all. Um, there will be lots of past their sell by parades at the wrong end of town. But with new ideas and cheaper space and the pursuit of adventure and experience, actually as much by the entrepreneur as for the customer, there will be exciting new concept stores. An eclectic mix of retail, gallery, chic, chic, chill out experience, who knows what. It's already started at the local levels uh, with the what I call yummy mummy, knit your own crockery and cookery course cafes of Crouch End, or the amazing niche concept stores of Backstreet, Antwerp, lousy covenants, low paying, low rent paying, lots of failures, but some possible businesses. Some of those will go viral, multiple, multi-channel, and join the branded retail theatres that are coming to us now and are aiming at different markets, uh, different customer segments. Who would have thought there would ever be an M&M store based on a single uh, confectionery item? But I'm not sure if I'm really looking forward to the over 60s version of Abercrombie and Fitch. <laughs> yeah, don't go there. That's why there's no pictures. Um, many, many retail, think about it, many retail parts will go, hopefully the ones that never deserve to be here in the first place. Many off-pitch shopping centres will crumble physically and financially, so complete rate of redevelopment does become a real option. Some to dense integrated mixed-use semi-private neighbourhoods, some to food stores. An East Finchie High Road, a bit battered, a bit bruised, much the same. I fear that many won't survive in the same way because I think the response, despite the original coming, will be too little, too late. And finally, just my last thought for you. Um, you haven't said four minutes yet, that I'm being too quick. No, no, I, I'm just intrigued by listening to you. All right, it's okay. absolutely fantastic. We've got a um, panel session at the end of this, and, and the whole thing finishes in. 20 minutes. Okay. So Just one last little 30 seconds. To those of you who think that the town centre and high street should be quietly put to sleep, I'll ask you to think about one thing, and that's that change faction factor. We are experiencing dramatic change in retail patterns and habits, habits over a sh very short time scale, coupled with the most extraordinary economic circumstances in 100 years. The town centres, town centres have been the focus for urban, <coughs> urban communities for centuries, and not just for retail. Are we really able to assess the future so accurately that we're prepared to jettison the, that mainstay of society <coughs> just because it's having a tough time at a single dot in time? There will be future change that we haven't even thought about. What happens when natural resources, especially fuel, particularly topical today, uh, is no longer available? What happens to Tesco and all circular then? It may be that we return to a series of polycentric trading, entertainment and cultural centres at the heart of our urban areas, or could they be called shopping centres? Thank you very much.